Okay, when you're adding and subtracting uh, numbers, whether they're whole numbers or decimals, you have to keep place value in mind. Okay, so for instance, here's 437. So this is the hundreds place, the tens place, and the ones place. So that's seven ones, three tens, and four hundreds. Here is two tens and a one. Okay, so when you're adding or subtracting, you have to add or subtract ones to ones, tens to tens, hundreds to hundreds, tenths to tenths, and so forth. So you probably learned early on that when you're using whole numbers, you line up the ends of the numbers here. So I would write 4, 37, and then put the 21 here. And most students don't have a problem with that. They line up the last digit, and then everything goes from there. Okay? I'm not going to do these problems. I'm just going to show you how they line up. Okay? Now, the same rule applies when we put decimals in the numbers, but you have to be more careful because we're not going to line up the end of the numbers. The real rule is you line up the place values. So what are the place values here? The 4 is 4 ones. This is tenths and this is hundredths. Over here we have tens and ones. So we have to add ones to ones. And so it's as though we put a decimal after here and we have to line up the decimals. So the real rule really should be line up the decimals. If you don't have decimals in the numbers, Think of it like there's a decimal at the end. If the decimal is shown, then uh, that's where the decimal point is. And so here, this 21 is actually a 21 with like a virtual decimal point there. It's a hidden decimal point. And so if you line up the decimal points, that's the same rule as lining up the end of the numbers here, but it'll put these in the right places too. So if I write 4.37, Okay, and then 21 with the decimal point lined up, we have that. Now, you can put zeros over here if you want. Uh, you don't have to, but uh, there's nothing wrong with doing that. That way you add 7 and 0 and 3 and 0. So the 7, 3, and then 4 and 1 is 5, and here's your 2. So that's the way these have to line up to add correctly. What about this? Line up the decimals. Write down 0.437. Line up the decimal. Put the decimal point here, and so this is going to be 2.1, and then I can fill out zeros in the rest of them if I like. Now I can see that I'm going to line up the 7 and the 3, and the 4 and the 1 makes a 5, and there's just the 2 over here. Okay. How about this? 43.7, and then 0 .0021, so 0 .0021 and fill in zeros up here if you like and this is subtracting let's go ahead and do this one uh, hopefully you've already seen my video about subtracting I'm going to show you subtracting without borrowing if you haven't seen that one you might wonder what I'm doing so go and see that one next but let's try this one I'm going to say 1 plus something has to end in a 0 so it has to become a 10 so 9 and 1 ends in a 0 9 and 1 is 10 carry the 1 to the bottom this is a 3 and 7 is 10, carry the 1 to the bottom. This is now a 1 and 9 is 10, carry the 1 to the bottom. 1 and 6 makes 7. Here's the decimal point, and here's a 3, and there's a 4. Okay, so that's the answer uh, for subtracting, but you have to get the uh, digits in the right places or you'll be completely wrong. Okay. That's just something to watch out for, and I mention it because this is one of those things that you learn one way early in elementary school, and then you have to change when you get to decimals. If you worked with decimals all along, you could apply the same decimal rule to the whole numbers, but um, making the switch is something that some students don't get. So that's how it works.